So there's this new way of looping through data using apex cursor methods. These allow us to grab data using SQL, then work with a subset of the data retrieved. Today, I want to showcase this new method of looping through data using the apex cursor methods. And if you don't know who I am, my name's Justin. I've been a Salesforce developer for five years, and I run this YouTube channel to help developers just like you improve their skills. But okay, so why is this new method good? In a normal SQL query, we return all records retrieved in a list. And this is great for a small amount of records. And so if we look at a base example of how to get records from Salesforce, we take a query where we can get fields as well as the object, and we store this in a list of that typed object. We then go and if we want to say like, make callouts to a third party system, we loop through individual records to go and send to a third party system. And at the end of this, we can go and update these records in a DML statement. The big problem with using data in this method is that we have a limit of 100 callouts. So after the 101st account here, we would throw an error of too many callouts. To get around this, what we can do is we can use the queuable interface to go and loop through records. And so what we can do is we can instantiate this queuable with that SQL query of accounts, and then we can loop through them, in this case, one at a time, to go and get around that 100 callout limit. And this works well. And additionally, if we needed to use some sort of sleep method like how we have here, we can add a delay to get around some sort of rate limiting call we might encounter. But the main problem with the queuable interface lies in how we actually initiate it in the first place. As you can see, we still start with this first SQL query. And what this means is that we have a hard limit of 2000 records that we can query at a given time. So what if we started with 2001 records? Well, we would need to change our approach. What we can do is we can use batch apex to get up to about 50 million records, right? And so we can query those records at the beginning. We can split the records that we want into smaller groups called batches that will go and run with their individual limits. So for example, if we set the batch size for 100, we could go and run through uh, those 2001 records in batches of 100. This would get around that limit of 2000 records maximum and we could go and still process individual records inside the batch one at a time. And so if we look at an example batch implementation here, you can see where we use the get query locator method and pass in that same SQL query, but we no longer have that limit of only 2000 records. And then in that execute method of the batchable context, we can then process records in the uh, manner that we need to and update accordingly. But this approach does have a problem. And that problem is that all of these batches will run in parallel. Well, why is that a problem? When we go and we run into third-party systems like Shopify, QuickBooks, Salesforce, etc., they have something called rate limiting. And this rate limiting is very difficult to work with in a parallel setting. Rate limiting is the idea of you're given, we'll just say 60 callouts to a third party system in maybe 60 seconds. In other words, you can make one callout per second. If we run these records one at a time serially, right? We run them record after record after record, we can control that period that we send callouts to third party systems. But if we use this parallel system, we need to track what has been sent and how many callouts have been made within the period. This gets very complicated very fast, and we would need something like a sleep method. We would need something to communicate the rate limit between these batches. And so what ends up happening is it becomes a mess. Thankfully, to get around this, we can use the new methods with apex cursors. But before we get into that, if you're enjoying this content, hit the subscribe button right now because it lets me know to make more content just like this. So we can use Apex cursors by using the database.cursor methods. And so what we can do is we can create an instance of 
the database.cursor called locator. And then we can go and use the database.getCursor method where we go and pass in a string of our Sogol query. We can then start with the position in the query, which we could use later on to iterate through. And then what we can do is we can say the locator.fetch method will return a list of the types, so in this case, account. And we can do from the starting position, which in this case is zero, but that could be um, zero, five, 10, 100, a million, whatever it needs to be, up to the cursor size, which in this case is 10. We then maybe might want to iterate through the position, uh, which would not be possible in this example, um, but we could go and iterate through our scope to go and process these records one at a time again through a for loop, right? But to go and iterate through the whole cursor, we would need some sort of method like a queuable. And so what I have here is I have an example queuable where we have a class variable of the locator, we have a class variable of the position, and we can also define here the cursor size for our queuable. Then what we can do is when we instantiate the queuable, we can say that this.locator equals the database.getCursor, right? Similar to how we did before. And we can also set the position to zero. That way this is initialized. From here inside the execute method, what we can do is we can first check for the number of records. So what we'll do is if the number of records equals zero, we'll just return and close out of the queuable. This is in place because what I found is the cursor method will go and actually throw an internal Salesforce error if there are no records found in the locator. Therefore, we have this check in place. From here, we can go get the subset of the accounts by using the same locator.fetch method with sending the position and the cursor size. And then we can go and increment the position based on the amount of records received. Then once again, we can go and process the accounts and use our callouts as needed, which will be all under 100, presumably, because we are in a queuable context. From there, maybe we need to go and assume that there are more than, you know, in this case, 10 records. So if the position is less than the number of records retrieved from the query, then we can go and enqueue the job again. And this is great because what we can do is we can process records individually or per cursor size and not worry about that parallel issue that we had with the batch class. Now there are some limits that you need to be aware of. Specifically, there's a 50 million records per cursor, pretty generous. And there's also a 10,000 cursors per day. Uh, this is much more difficult to work around, but still doable. And of course, there is that 100 callouts per transaction. And the beauty of these cursor methods is that when we're instantiating that example cursor, we don't need to go and start with uh, passing in the list of records so we can get past that initial 2000 record hurdle that we had by just querying the records from the database using a standard SQL query. With that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Thanks and have a good one.